I start my shift on the station, in the mining bay. With all the lockers seemingly spoken for, I waste no time in heading for the supply area in the mining base, down on Lava Land. The shuttle touches down in the middle of an ash storm. I load up, getting my protokinetic actuator, my mining rifle. I attach a survival knife to it, making a bayonet. Some miners report over the radio that they're stuck in the airlock on the station. I send the shuttle back, which will unlock it, letting them board. I let them know it's on its way. I grab a suit as the storm outside starts to die down. Getting to the mining base entrance, I jimmy the access controller to keep the interior and exterior airlocks open, allowing us to walk right in without pressing a button. Some nut job presses the button, getting them out of sync again. They really need to stop making those buttons so shiny. I head north and start a tunnel, starting with a gold seam. There's some blue space crystal and more gold. Wandering a bit, I skirt past a goliath to stumble into the remains of some ancient settlement. I poke around for anything interesting, but nothing immediately worthwhile. I open a large stone door to a small room revealing a necropolis spire surrounded by lava with a clutch of ashwalker eggs at the base. Nothing I want here either. The whole area has got a bad vibe, especially those eggs, and I'm not trying to get face huggered. I work my way out to the mines, dodging the goliath again. I pass by another miner. I notice some more blue space crystal and start moving towards it. Just before I can get to it, he knocks on my box. A bit disrespectful, but easily overlooked for a fellow miner. Oi, he says. Got any heals? I'm about to root through my bag to see what I even have when I realize he's made handcuffs with the cables. I try to move away from Fifty Shades of Nope when the unnatural blinding glare from his eyes paralyzes me. He tries to slip the cuffs on my hands, but I snap out of the paralysis and move away quickly, darting back and getting my rifle. He fires at me, hitting me with a blast in the chest. Reflexively, I return fire, waiting for the next shot to charge. I make my way past him, stabbing his box, the ultimate sign of disrespect. He chases after me, firing a shot and missing. I hit him, but I'm coughing up blood. I fire again, removing the rock wall acting as his cover. He backs further into the shaft. I back further into the dead end, injecting myself with the survival medipen. As I'm looking up, I see him rounding the corner. Surprise, motherfucker. He fires at me, missing just as another miner wanders past the streams of gore leading to the bloody mine shaft. Figuring a witness is my only hope, I ramp up my attempt to make it past. I cough up blood as I put another shot right to his chest. He continues going while I veer off, making my way back to the mining base. He rounds the corner, his original direction a bait of sorts, as he continues to chase after me. I stand up, naming my attacker over the radio. He fires wildly. I stab a few more times before I collapse. Another miner watches, asking, what the hell? My attacker collapses, coughing up blood. He answers my charge over the radio, announcing that I've gone mental on him. I hesitate firing, but I decide that he's hunted me long enough. The other miner shouts, hey, as if to break up a simple bar fight. Darkness surrounds me. I don't even feel the next few blasts of the chest. They suddenly stop. I think my attackers succumb to his injuries. Reborn. I think they made a clone of me and gave me all its organs. There was something about a cowboy hat. Although there's some obvious imperfections to the process. I'm blind and uncontrollably shouting random obscene phrases. They give me a pill, who knows what it could be. But it cures my blindness and I can think clearly again. I thank them and, oh, it looks like I have a visitor. A security officer waiting in the shadows of Medbay, with all the professional courtesy of a mother using one's full name, his honeyed tongue asking if I'd mind answering a few questions. Sure, I agree. Playing cool, knowing my bayonet was just stuck deep in another miner's chest. They know my name, after all. I'm in the system. The only way out of this is throwing everything away and becoming Giggles the Clown living on a beach somewhere. What happened on Lava Land between me and the guy? I tell him. The guy who attacked me asked me about medicine, and when I was distracted, rummaging through my bag, he tried to tie me up and shoot me. 
classic contemporary alleyway love story adapted for two miners in a mine shaft. That is, two adult miners, both consenting to homicide and self-defense, give or take. The sec officer snaps his fingers. With that, he announces in his radio that the guy's a confirmed murderer. Just interviewed the victim, he says. Uh, okay. Yeah, I am the victim. Right, he confirms. That's all we needed to hear. So that wasn't so much a few questions as one. Glad I could help, I mention, figuring I don't want to ruin a good understanding with too much detail. I make my way back towards mining where I'll probably die to one of the other hazards besides fellow miners whose eyes light up. I announce over the radio my appreciation for them hauling me out of harm's way. I take a quick shower before realizing a guy in a mech suit is watching me. I get out when they pass by. Hey man, you want me to keep showering? I'm gonna need to see some money. Feeling a little vulnerable, man versus machine and all, I give the mecha suit guy a wide berth. He moves closer, asking, so what happened earlier? I summarize it for him. Dude went crazy, tried to handcuff me, and then attacked me. After another awkward pause, he just says, huh, weird. <laughs> yeah, fucking Tuesdays, right? I feel like I haven't convinced them, saying dude went crazy is a little kitsch shorthand that we know at least one guilty person has already used. I follow it up with, yeah, which was odd because I was just mining along, adding that he was an absolute stranger to me. The guy mentions it's probably just because I was alone and that I was lucky it happened so close to the mining base instead of the ass end of nowhere where our bodies wouldn't have been found. I let them know I came to that conclusion as well. They agree, and I take leave to go find my gun. It doesn't take long for me to realize my gun's not here. I stumble around the gore and viscera for a moment before returning to the mining base. I'll just have to get another one. An ash storm starts on the horizon, just as I'm getting to the base. On my way into the resupply, I see what looks like my gun stashed in the corner. How did that even get here? I shower the blood off of it as another miner passes by, setting his rifle down to snack on some cactus fruit while we wait for the ash storm to clear. I go and get the wooden crate I'd been loading ore into. I mine some more. As I'm gunning my way out of the mine shaft, someone blows the rock wall that I'm standing next to apart, which doesn't have any ore in it. He clicks his mandibles. I guess it's okay. I keep it mining, setting lights down as I go. I grab my wooden crate and get in the shuttle. As I dock with the station, security messages me over my PDA, asking if I shot the guy first. I think back. Yes, I believe I did. He was using cable restraints on me. Heh <laughs> honesty's the best policy, right? Come to processing, he says. Ugh, here's that paperwork. Well, here's something. I empty the ore into the redemption machine. I go to the mining dock and load anything I don't need into the locker. In case I have to do hard time, I want to know all my gear is safe. I make my way to processing. I'm waiting around in the lobby when I get another message asking why my body was husked. I let him know, I don't know, and that I'm outside. I let him know that thinking back, I remember there was a glare from his eyes. A little robot, nice little robot. The waiting is unbearable. I need to calm down. I make my way to the cigarette machine, buying a pack of smokes and a cheap lighter. I'm still waiting. I sit down. Waiting. I pace back and forth, smoking. The clown goes past. He's probably got an office here. I review my conversation. I definitely let him know I was here. One of the miners warns over the radio that they might need rescuing. Another miner responds, they're on the lookout. Damn it, I should be down there, rescuing my brothers, not up here getting the third degree. I message the officer, letting him know I'm still out front. He comes out and gets me, escorting me past what will no doubt be my future residence. I get in and the clown asks how I could confirm. Wait, the clown's sitting in on this interrogation? Oi, you! My attacker says, fuck you. Confirm what, I ask, ignoring my attacker's insults. He asks that I be handcuffed, noting that he doesn't trust me. This guy's a maniac, I say. 
So, one of you instigated the fight, the officer asks. You're the maniac, my attacker retorts. The clown grabs the tape recorder, which is clearly not recording, and presses the button. It sends out a little alert that says the tape is full. I mention my attacker must know all about handcuffs since he tried to restrain me. My attacker denies any knowledge of cable restraints, asking me where they are, if this were true, indicating that there's none in his belongings or at the murder scene. The clown starts the recording just as the officer asks us both to be quiet, or he'll bring us both for manslaughter, suggesting we answer one at a time, starting with me. I recount how I was mining along when this maniac asked me for medicine. He agrees. I continue explaining that as I was rummaging through my bag, he tried to restrain me. He doesn't disagree, except contending that that's when I attacked him. I add that's when his eyes glimmered, which is when I shot at him. I see, the cop looks at him. My attacker thanks me for the compliment, noting that he does have good eyes. I chide him that they help offset from his awful face. He starts off saying that he was mining and got attacked by a Goliath, when he happened upon me and asked for heels. He notes we both wore masks, suggesting I couldn't see his awful face, and he contends that after he asked me for heels, I stumbled for a second and pulled my gun on him. The officer notes that they tested my attacker based on the description I gave and that there's no evidence that they're a ling. He continues that I'm deliberately lying, asking if there's anything else I'd like to add. I confirm that I'd like to add they should give him the chair, the electric chair. My attacker suggests they get one of the witness statements. The officer notes that won't be necessary since there's no evidence and the brig's unpowered. I interrupt, my dead body wasn't enough? My attacker asks if his dead body wasn't enough. The officer accuses me of spinning lies by suggesting the attacker was a vampire. Well, maybe he's a vampire, but it's clear they tested him. And for whatever reason, they didn't get a positive result. And so the officer's turning up the heat on me, clearly shutting it off on my attacker meaning I have no choice but to rein in my charging of the attacker so I can defend myself against the allegations. Justice be damned, I guess. I just said his eyes glimmered. I didn't say vampire. My attacker suggests trial by combat. No doubt he's had a refill on his blood and he's ready to get all vampire bill on my sookie steakhouse ass. The officer notes we both committed excessive self-defense. I see the writing on the wall. You got clowns working here. I'll bet he administered the vampire test. Yeah, I stand a better chance down on the planet where everything including my fellow miner might be trying to kill me than here with Officer Bozo and Murder She Wrote Off running an investigation. I agree that I'm willing to drop the issue. He reciprocates. I wander around. I just don't want to go down on the same shuttle. I quickly get to the last locker, grabbing my gear. God damn it. Yeah, here he is. Yeah, I uh, forgot something. I'll figure it out in a minute. I hang out in the cargo office watching someone with a cushy job gorge themselves on pizza. Not much fighting to the death here, is there? They don't offer me any, but I grab some pizza anyway. Giving it a moment, I go back to the mining dock, checking the security camera to see if the coast is clear planet side or if somebody's lying in wait. Looks good. I rush down only for another ash storm to start up. I redeem some points for a better scanner and considering the hazards of the land today, a damage upgrade will be my first priority. I then remember I can check in with science and maybe get some advanced plasma cutters and a satchel of holding. I've just hit the launch button to return the shuttle to the station when one of the miners screams for help, citing, Miner Corrupted. Hmm, that's odd. Didn't we just release a suspected vampire down there, and now another miner is having difficulty? Mm hmm I get to science and ask about the gear when they offer to accommodate upgrades for my gun as well. I mention cooldown and range mods would be good, getting upgrades for my gun across the board. I ask if they need anything that I can get for them for their research. Anything I can return the favor with. They decline, citing they're all good, except they could use a minebot upgrade. I give them a big thanks and run off, definitely planning on getting them that upgrade. As I'm making my way back to mining, my attacker notes that the guy asking for help got attacked and killed by a blood drunk miner. I mention it's not suspicious at all that he's the one reporting on that. We toss it back and forth like a couple of snotty schoolgirls. Speaking of which, the quartermaster sobers up long enough to ask what's going on. 
I decide to skedaddle back to the safety of the lava-infested pits of hell, when, as I'm stepping foot on the shuttle, it tears away from the dock, taking off towards the planet. That means someone's coming up. It also means I'm stuck in the airlock. Thinking fast, I duck into a locker, hoping to avoid being seen by the only miner alive to be coming up. A VAM... miner, if you will. The shuttle returns. I watch the slits in the locker door, waiting for them to pass by. After they do, I bust out of the locker and make my way down, where I get tools and put the modifications on my gun, re-adding them. I put on the cool mining shades, grab another GPS, deciding to leave the name anonymous. I happen upon another GPS, picking it up. It's my old one. It looks like my attacker doesn't actually even have a GPS. I fix that. I rename it to my attacker's name and leave it where I found it. That'll confuse them. I do some mining. Wait, is that a beach? Down here on this hellhole? Maybe I could have started another life. Actually, seeing all the blood in the mining pick makes it seem like I would have just had the same old problems. Rounding the corner to the lifeguard shack. It's sure enough. Looks like the local bartender and some bay watcher got torn to shit combined by the mining pick and axe suggesting it wasn't one of the locals that did this. I followed the blood trail, dead end. There's nothing more to be gained from this unsanctified hole. I go back to mining. As I do, my attacker announces a radio check, suggesting they're going to come and help any miner who's in distress. I remain silent. One guy pipes up he's alive, another guy too. I meet an ash drake. They say something. I continue on. Maybe I shouldn't have left the savage alive, but I'm not an incomprehensible monster preying on everyone that gets too close. I get back to the mining base to see another miner exiting. He's not my attacker. He's all geared up. I try to keep my distance. He gets in close, saying, Hey! He asks if I'm using a GPS. Isn't that a little forward, sir? I tell him to stay away and confirm that I'm not. I loop back around, keeping my distance as I dash into the shuttle, guarding my back. Yeah, not today, buddy. I deposit my ore, adding 4,626 points. I get back down and head to resupply when I bump into the miner from before, no doubt robbing the blood supply from the med closet. I'm out, pounding off into the safety of hell. I happen upon a goliath, figuring I'll slip past without it noticing me before I bore a hole in the wall, just in time for its tendrils to burrow up from the ground and stun me. I drop my weapon. He moves in closer pounding on my head. I snap out of the paralysis, quickly grabbing my rifle. I run out of its reach, past its tentacles that explode up through the ground. I fire at it, hitting it in the chest. Blood drips from my hand. I use my knife to pry off its armored plates, which I add to my suit. It's not much, but it'll protect me a bit. I grab my plasma cutter and keep moving in the direction of the mining base. I get to the mysterious remains of a birthday party including untouched, still-burning candles on a cake and unopened boxes of pizza. I get to the mining base, make my way up to the station where there's another party going on, outside the quartermaster's office. I deliver my ore, claiming the 6,219 points, bringing me to a total of 11,490. I get to the hospital and let the doctor know I hurt my hand. They heal my hand and head up, slipping me the beneficial healing virus. I give my thanks as they rush off to somewhere. I head out and leave when the doctor chases after me a bit. I play hard to get because why does everyone have to be right next to me all the time to tell me something? The doctor makes no effort to indicate I need something. What? I ask. Low blood. She pops two 20 unit pills in my mouth. Mmm, irony. I get some boots from the vending machine. I get down to the surface when I remember the mine bot for science. I purchase one from the vending machine and get back up to the station. On the way through, someone's mopped the floor, which I slip on, despite the signs to walk, which they gleefully point to. I get to the main hall, where I pass the janitor slapping a giant spider with a fly swatter. I take it for a threat, despite it maybe not being one. I pitch in the spider's destruction. I note that it wasn't a terror spider, suggesting it was a friendly one created by our xenobiologists, but really, if you're born as a giant spider and you're not a terror spider, then honestly, we really just did you a favor. 
I plop the mind by AI on the science desk, pointing to it. Someone says thanks, but I don't know if they're talking to me. I get down to the planet when a fellow miner yells out for a medic. I unbuckle and help them in before launching the shuttle back. I grab them and take them to medbay. I spend my points on space cash. 6,000 points equaling 3,000 space bucks. Finally enough for a little nest egg, some money to cover my risky out of the money puts on too big to fail space corporations. I get to the station where I deposit the money in my account. I wander out of the mining base without realizing the storm's brewing until the burning ash is singeing my face. I pop another shelter and wait it out. I use a survival medipen. I mine a bit until the emergency shuttle docks. I get back up to the station, making my way to the emergency pods. I slip past the doctor who's waiting for the launch. They slip past me, moving me to the rear. Yeah, you better drive, I say, realizing it's going out over the radio. Looks like someone set the intercom here to a hot mic. The surgeon asks me how my day was. I ask if this is going to turn out ironic, if they're all topped up blood-wise. They respond they're fantastic, and that they killed two patients and dismembered another. I lament it's probably why they call it practice. I accidentally shoot the surgeon with my PKA. I apologize and they say, oh, it's no problem, they just got shot a few seconds ago by an abductor. Well, you had an interesting shift. Me too. The shuttle docks, the end of a long, interesting shift. <laughs>